Very good morning, church. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. What a joy to have you this morning with us to worship the Lord. We thank the Lord for you. You know, my name is Charles. Welcome to Papa's house. We are so thrilled that you have taken time to worship Jesus with us. This is the last Sunday of 2020. Did you ever thought in your life that 2020 will be like this for you? Did you ever come across that you would be going through 2020 like this? I remember the last Sunday as a family of Papa's house we gathered was in March 20th. I think so if I have the calendar correct. Uh, let me check it out. Yes, it was on March 22nd. That was the last Sunday we had. And that was just right after our anniversary. We sang this blessing song and we thought it would be for a month. And then we started t doing a live service. And the first live service was horrible because we didn't know how to do live service. The connection was bad. The lighting was bad. Then we got friends coming and helping us. And, and we thought it would be for a few months. Then we took a break to come to Spain. The borders were closed. Now we are at the end of 2020. But can I tell you something? In all this thing, our Papa is a good father. Our God is a good father. And this uh, week, especially on 29, 30 and 31, we will be having a special time of thanksgiving, prayer and fasting through Zoom. And I will tell you the timings. If you can just take a moment to come there and we will have a corporate gathering of prayer, fasting and worshipping and thanking the Lord, sharing the testimonies. All this is going to happen uh, in the last few days. So prepare your heart, prepare yourself for that. And uh, I believe that on the 31st, God willing, what we will do, we will not just have a, a service like this, what you're doing now. We will have a Zoom service, which will be uh, telecast to Facebook and YouTube. But we'll have a Zoom interaction so that people can pray, share a word, you know, share what Papa has done in their life. So it will be more an interactive service. And it will be just one and a half hours starting from 11 o'clock to 12.30. So if you can just prepare yourself for that because many of you might need to go back to your duty in the morning. So I understand that. So we usually gather in our place with, for a dinner and people come and we eat together. And then we disperse them after right after service. So it's going to be a time of thanking the Lord, celebrating His goodness and then boom you know receiving what the lord has for us uh, uh, for this coming year 2021 how many of you are so thrilled that 2020 papa 2020 i am done <laughs> you know i am thrilled like that actually so just before i get into the world i just would love to uh, pray with you father i just want to thank you so much for this morning uh, I pray, Father, the Holy Spirit will speak to us, reveal your heart to us. Uh, and I pray, Jesus, that you will put your word in my mouth. And this is your word and you will be glorified. No flesh can take confidence in this. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of uh, this last Sunday's message, it goes like this. My father's business my father's business. I want you to turn your Bible to Luke chapter 2. I was quite uh, uh, frustrated at myself uh, because of an incident that happened between me and Isaac. Uh, actually, uh, that was I disciplined him without knowing uh, the full story. He did something to Asha and uh, I thought he was being unkind to his sister, so I disciplined him. And later I came to realize there's always two sides to your coin. Uh, but I disciplined him thinking what I saw, what I heard was right. And I came up to prepare and I'm, I'm before the face of the Lord. I'm praying and worshiping. I didn't hear anything blank. Boom. I'm 
like lord what the heck i don't hear you anything what's wrong you know i'm sorry lord blah 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 nothing and after a while i was praying and i heard the lord lord tell me i want to hear from you he said to me go down apologize to your son and then i'll tell you i was like oops you know when god speaks to you you better obey you know otherwise you will uh, you will not hear the voice because he he is not here to prove he is god he is here to uh, willing to sh- co partner with you to build this kingdom so i went down i put uh, pulled eyes up up and put him on the counter kitchen counter and i said to him i'm sorry son i have treated you bad without knowing the whole incident and uh, there is two sides to your story i didn't know that it was an accident and you kind of reacted to that and and uh, so as i was apologizing i apologized to him and to asha and then i felt the lord telling me to ask them to pray for me and i said to them can you please pray for your dad dad is going to go up and record the sermon and uh, uh, they were praying for me and um, <laughs> he said uh, uh, lord jesus that you will give uh, uh, daddy a good word so that he can encourage his friends back in our dear lovely country india and uh, i got up from the prayer i came up and as i was praying the lord gave me this word so this is a fresh word the lord has given me to give it to you it's not a word that uh, was there or i preached before it is something just straight out of the oven <laughs> okay turn with me to luke chapter 2 verse 49 okay luke chapter 2 verse 49 i'm reading from the new king james version and he said to them who jesus and he said to them why did you seek me did you not know that i must be about my father's business and this is the title it's called my father's business and we're going to talk about this father's business this is the first recorded words of jesus so as you know the story behind it they went to jerusalem every year for their annual feast and as they celebrated and they went back remember they worked together in those days as a clan as a tribe so uh, jesus mother mary and um, joseph went ahead after the uh, celebration and they assumed that their son boy jesus by this time he's 12 years old he he's going to be all right he's going to be with his auntie and uncles or cousins or maybe with sona some of his uh, extended family members so they kind of walked along almost a day's journey and then they figured out that time there was no text whatsapp or phone call to check out is my son with you or blah 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 nothing like that so after a day's journey i probably think they might have camped somewhere and then all their family came together and they realized my goodness jesus is missing and look at the anguish that happened and i think the series chosen as pictured beautifully that the first introduction to mary uh, was she's running towards jerusalem and finding where her son is and that anguish and then joseph brings uh, of course it's very pictorial it's not recorded in the bible but the anguish of a mother was brought into a place where like wow my son where are you and these are the first words recorded uh, by dr luke uh, the words of jesus and this is luke 2:49 he said to them why did you seek me did you not know that i must be about my father's business and i want to talk about the father's business see Jesus did not come here to earth just to do something God wants him to do and then go back. He he was not basically acting like a servant who just says I'm just going to go do this job and then I'm going to get my paycheck and go live my life. No, he actually incorporated in himself the business of the father and he came with a mandate 
to share and to live and to proclaim and to demonstrate what the father had in his mind even before the foundations of the world and that's why if you read few verses before in Luke chapter 2 verse 14 it says beautifully this is one of those exclamations it says like this glory to god in the highest peace upon earth among men of good will and if you look at this it's like a cross glory to god in the highest and peace upon men of good will and this is the proclamation of the father's business why jesus came and i have written down here four or five points to consider what is the business of the father means and how we can embrace that business because we have a mandate as we are you know part of jesus and jesus through jesus we get the abrahamic covenant so through jesus we have also a mandate the bible says just like you suffer with him you also will reign with him so there is an incorporation the father god designed for us to have through his son jesus and we will unlock some eternal purposes okay but i have to ask you to turn your bible to the most familiar passage in isaiah 61 and we are not going to read the whole chapter but i want to nail one verse there that will give us a little bit of a blueprint of the father's business and isaiah 61 verse 6 goes like this and but you shall be named the priest of the lord and they shall call you the servants of a god and you shall eat the riches of the gentiles and in their glory you shall boast now the number one goal of god for you and me is not just to keep you happy or entertain you that's what we have been taught in the church uh, that we grew up we come to god to be entertained to be feel good to to ask him uh, certain things and he's like the santa claus with lots of goodies he's just going to keep spoiling us with stuff and then when we cry out to him when we are in trouble he's going to answer us is basically your kabali <laughs> he is basically your your servant waiting there to demonstrate the works that whatever you are asking no he is not in some people think he is like that that magic genie you rub you pray certain prayer you fast something you do certain things and god is going to boom shower his blessing basically that's all man made created ideas god created us for this i have written down this number 1 God created us so that humanity will worship him. That's the number one business of the Father that Jesus was sent into this world. That we are introduced to this ever-loving, unconditional, merciful, compassionate, forgiving Father who is God Almighty and that we will fall prostrate before him. worship him and one of my favorite author a w tozer says this when we miss out the original i'm obviously paraphrasing it um, when you miss out the original design of god which is to worship him we will take something secondary what is that we will be occupied with activities and i am telling you this my dear friends most of our christian work has turned into bunch of activities we have reduced from the person to a policy we have reduced from worshiping him to bunch of being busy for god and i do believe there is an emergency to take his gospel and go but god is more interested in conquering us first than conquering through us and that's why even when jesus rose up from the dead and he said go and tell my disciple and peter because peter took a hard hit you know the story and he said go and tell the disciples and peter that i am going before them 
into Jerusalem. And and this is so beautiful to understand that. So I wanted to encourage you to really think about this, that we are not here so that when we cry out to God, God is going to just come and help us. You know, he is there just for whatever request we are throwing at him. No, we are here to worship him. And I want to read one quote for you. And this is a very, very interesting quote. And this has been a prayer a few days. I've been praying in my heart. It goes like this. Uh, oh God, under whom all hearts be open, unto whom all will speaketh, unto whom no private thing is hid, I beseech thee for so to cleanse the intent of my heart with the unspeakable gift of thy grace, that I may perfectly love thee and worthily praise thee or worship thee. That you will cleanse the intention of my heart with your unspeakable gift of grace so that I can worthily love you, perfectly love you and worthily praise you. My friends, we have reduced this whole issue of worship to an entertainment. We have made the focus about me. It's not me, it's him. That's what the word shaka means. It's fall prostrate. There is no words. The 24 elders, when they fall down before him, they just came one word, holy, 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 because there is nothing else that could be able to describe what they are seeing in front of them. There is nothing else that they could even comprehend because what they are seeing in front of him is not just a buddy God, is not just a friend, who is not just a companion, who is not just who takes them out from poverty into prosperity, not someone who takes them from shame into honor, is someone who is bigger than life. And they looked at him and they could not say anything other than falling prostrate and saying, Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. My friends, never, never miss the awesomeness and the wonder that's the father's business Jesus came so that humanity will worship him number two the father's business Jesus came so that his children will represent him to this broken world do you remember or do you realize we live in a broken world right now the pandemic crazy virus you know <laughs> isn't it crazy that this year there are some words that you never thought you will use, but you're using. For example, it's unprecedented. That's a word you never thought you will use, but you use it. Virus is everywhere. So many cases. <laughs> Mask. Gloves. PPE. Hand sanitizer. You know, when you carry hand sanitizer, people will look at you and say, this guy, he's a tourist. He's visiting my country. You know, that's why he carries hand sanitizer. <laughs> Today, everywhere, everywhere you go, you carry hand sanitizer. I remember we called one of those wholesale suppliers to get hand sanitizer. The first time he sold five liters for 750 rupees and uh, so I bought a couple of uh, five liter cans so that I can give to my brother and to some people that you know for Papa's house you know and the second time I called him he said five liter for 1850 he said Corona Vandrichi price Yerirchi Oh, my friend, we live in a broken world. We live in a broken world. So that's why the father's business, Jesus came, so that his children will represent him to this broken world. We have a unique opportunity. You and me as a privilege to share the life of Jesus in a way that people look at us and say, this guy is like a doctor like me. 
engineer like me, housewife like me, a, a gardener like me, security like me, a manager in the bank like me, a musician like me, you know, a, a staff nurse like me, a physiotherapist like me, or, or, or a mathematician like me, or a teacher like me, but something else is different in him. There is a presence that he is carrying. There is somebody that he is hosting. There is something inside. You know, people call that vibration. Sometimes people say to us, when we come to your home, we see a different vibration. And we say to them, that's called the presence of God. And people here, when we got married 10 and a half years ago in Spain, my father-in-law's family, they were not Christians. They just walked in and they said, we were here and we attended many weddings, but this wedding is unique. Something we feel, I don't know what is that. We said, Theo, Theo means uncle. Theo, this is the presence of God. <laughs> so we are, as his children, will represent him to this broken world. Number three, his kingdom will be established as a sign of hope, life and joy by co-reigning with him and bring his ever-increasing government of justice. Do you know that's one of the heartbeat of God, to bring justice? And that's why Christians are the first person who jumps into any chaotic problems to solve it. Do you know that? Every other religion don't bother about it. When tsunami hit, which was the first country that jumped in, the Christian mindset people, Maybe they come from a post-Christian worldview, but still they have this Judeo-Christian worldview. Who invented hospitals? <laughs> who invented schools? Who invented uh, the first school for women, Pandita Ramabai? First school of medical college, Ida Skada. First book that was ever translated, newspaper, William Carey. Guys, why I'm telling you this? Because justice is in the core heartbeat of God. And that's why he's so thrilled when his people who will be establishing his kingdom as a sign of hope. You know, people were dying left, right and center. This Muslim guy told Ida Skaras, you cannot touch my wife's body because you're a man. He said, I am man but I don't see your wife like that I am a doctor and many of you now you think like that's bizarre but that's the case but the lost he was willing to see his wife go based on his cultural framework but that triggered something that triggered something to bring hope again to bring life again to bring joy again Amen. So that we can co-reign with him and bring his ever-increasing government of justice. That's why last week on Christmas Sunday, Christmas service, we talked about the government will be on his shoulders. We are privileged to carry his government, to be his healing voice into the nations. Number four, I'm going to wrap it up quickly. We will, the father's business is that we will partake his life and live in communion with Him. We were never called to live outside the garden. That was a man-made error to live outside the garden. That's why C.S. Lewis said in one of his books, he said, I was kicking and screaming when I was brought into this religion called Christianity. And I thought I arrived to a place. Later I came to realize I didn't arrive to a place. into the garden so that we are the temple and we carry his presence and our life is a living sacrifice poured out as an offering to him. 
this is what we call communion and this is not that you do it on sundays this is you do it every single day in your life this you do it on your good days bad days hard days you know mundane days this this is who you are and that's why i'm saying church is first being and then doing because you can never find this ultimate purpose by just doing it unless you are being in incorporated in this fellowship that god has for you and me amen amen are you excited about the father's business the four fathers business what we talked about humanity will worship him his children will represent him to this broken world his kingdom will established as a sign of hope life and joy by co-reigning with him and bring his ever increasing government of justice number 4 we will partake his life and live in communion with him and last but not the least is so beautiful this is beautiful that the father's business why jesus came will be in constant and we will be in constant awe and wonder of the majestic presence of god now let me tell you this the moment you lose this is going to shock you the moment you lose the constant awness and the wonder of the majestic presence of god you reduce god to your body level a pure level and you kind of and and, and i'm not saying he's not your friend he is not your companion i'm not saying that there is a place for it there is a time for it but my friend the fear of the lord when you lose the fear of the lord the abuse of grace increases you hear what i just said the abuse of grace increases when there is an absence of fear of the lord so that's why today people say that's okay to you know here and there human brother and my girlfriend it's it's kuch kuch hota hai you know it's it's not a big deal he loves me anyway what happens the loss of fear of god has shoot up increase of the abuse of grace grace does not ignore sin grace empowers obedience and that's why it's so important to keep this awesome this dead racing universe creating everlasting prince of peace lives in me and i am not even worthy to be called but he has called me he pursued me he wants to dwell in my heart and it is a privilege that i can never lose that constant honesty should produce in us a sense of humility and that humility will flow into a sign of worship and that worship will make you admire and wonder the majestic presence of god my friends this is the father's business jesus came that's why when the mother asked son where were you we were so worried and he said why did you seek me did you not know that i must be about my father's business and every time jesus quoted this sometimes people will say stay here and he says no i must go and preach the gospel and everywhere you will see throughout the gospel this whole year I did only one thing the Lord told me read the gospels again and again and again and again so from January 1 and now until now I'm just reading the gospels again and again and again and again and one thing Jesus did very clearly you can see that he preached he taught but he also healed he was constantly bringing them to a different reality a sign of another kingdom a sign of another reality and helping them to focus on this awesomeness and the wonders who god is that's the father's business and i am challenging you that god is inviting you through jesus to be part of the father's business we are at the end of 2020 we are on 27th of december 2020 we have few more days matter of few hours you know less than like 100 hours or so we will be crossing to 2021 my friends i want you to posture your heart 
towards God. I want you to humble yourself. I want you to think about God. I look back in Berkman's there's a Tamil song. Nan kadandu vanda paadhaigalai thirumbi paarkiren kanneerodu karthave umakku nandri solugiren. I look back Lord and my life and I, all I can do is with my tears and I thank you. And that's my prayer for you my dear friends. I want you to posture your heart towards God. Humble yourself. Think about the Father's business. Realign yourself. Prepare yourself. And if you need to forgive someone, just go give them a call. Ask them to forgive you or release forgiveness. Don't keep the hurt. And if you are even in a place of like, man, um, I was bitter, I'm angry, I'm disappointed with what happened and all. Just let it go. Let Christ go. rain in your heart and let's prepare to be part of the father's business let me pray with you heavenly daddy we thank you so much for this wonderful day we thank you so much that you have brought us at the end of the last 52nd week of sunday the 27th of december 2020 it's so beautiful how you led us there were times we thought it was tough there were times we thought i don't know we will make it there were times we thought what's going to happen to our future there were times we thought it's too much there were times we thought there were times i thought i don't know this is this is going to ever work but lord you've been so faithful you've been so gracious your hand was there your kindness was there and your mercy was there you sustained us you sustained not only us you sustained through us daddy help us to be part of your father's business just like jesus was bringing your business on earth let us continue through him strengthen our hearts speak to us align us according to your will lord if there is anything we need to let go help us to let go if there is anything that we are still holding on help us to surrender it jesus speak to us patrick is going to come lead us in communion my friend take it take part in the blood of jesus take part in the body of jesus and if you don't know jesus i want you to invite you to say jesus come into my heart 2020 was a mess but you are the one that turns my mess into a message of hope come into my heart i believe that you are the lord who died for my sins i confess it with my mouth i believe that you rose again from the dead i believe that i invite you into my heart cleanse me lord cleanse me say this cleanse me lord i invite you i want to start a new life with you pray the simple prayer and you are born again my dear brothers and sisters you are part of a bigger family of god eternal family of god so father i pray for strength and courage for all of us we thank you we humble ourselves we give you glory you are holy we are in total awe and wonder of who you are in our lives we thank you in jesus name amen love you guys shalom let's we will meet again this weekend for a beautiful time of praise and worship and declaring the goodness of god love you shalom